two very awesome people have sent me packages and let's do an unbox video I'm really curious about this one because it's supposedly a 1920s battery charger I've only felt inside of it so far and it definitely feels like something old and this has some little goodies in it let's start with that one so I believe this package is from somebody named Dave and they did they wanted to stay mostly anonymous but I think the word the name Dave is pretty anonymous it's just unanonymous enough to where you you know for sure that when I when I say Dave I'm talking about you Dave so thank you very much Ooh. 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 I'm so excited man oh wow holy shit Okay, so in here should be the Tungar bulb, and then, holy, holy hell, this thing's heavy. It's got a slate front. Oh, yes, this is most likely going to be a restoration. Sure. Wonderful Wyoming. Okay, well, well, that's a cool pencil. That is so cool. Looks like this is uh, kind of broken off. So I'll need to repair that. This goes from zero to six amperes, DC amperes. We have a fuse, and then inside of here we should have the Tungar bulb. Ah, oh, yeah, stuffed inside of a shirt. I had asked him to wrap the the bulb separately because these bulbs are very hard to find. Oh, that's a very old one. See, so, yeah, that's the Tungar bulb. goes down here and there should be somewhere the cable for oh there it is right here and we'll clamp onto here I plan to do a bigger video of this later whenever I do a restoration but for now I believe that how it works is you have the power transformer that would take in 110 volts and put out like I don't know 24 volts and I believe that runs the Tungar bulb which rectifies the power from AC into DC or pulse DC actually and then or actually I don't know it might be just full DC I'm not sure and then we have this dial on the front which can select different connections which are all these wires going back to here, which we have all these these wire uh, these coils and stuff, which are, are essentially large resistors. And so whenever we're adjusting this, we're just putting bigger or smaller resistors in series with these wires, I guess. And this should be the on off and yeah, it's really simple. This is really nice, I like it. I have no doubt in my mind this is most likely asbestos, which is fine by me. I mean, asbestos won't hurt anybody if it's just sitting there. It's whenever you start hacking at it that it really hurts you. This tape is ripping off all the paint. Ah, well. Hmm. So these are separate, it seems. And this most likely just fits on top of here. So you can do a quick swap out of the Tungar bulb. That's actually pretty nice. You can lock it right there. So then you can always open it up and get to the bulb and the fuse. I just looked at the shirt and 
This is the most Wyoming package I've ever gotten. Kind of funny. So, thank you very much, Dave. This is really cool. Looks like a lot of this stuff should clean off okay. Yeah, it looks like the paint in the background of that plate is actually fine. There's just a bunch of dirt and grime on the front. I'm not sure about this wheel. I might want to soak it in like linseed oil or something just to make it not so dry and dead. Now we're into the tiny package from Sean C. Thank you very much, Sean C. This is pretty cool. So he sent me a Coronet B light meter with a really wonderful chain. That's really cool. But I might be able to use this with my Bolex to measure how much how much light there is in the area. That's really cool. Oh, so that's a holster, I see. Interesting. This chain is really fascinating. And this entire thing is like almost like a piece of jewelry or something. So that screw in the back allows me to calibrate it, it looks like. That's kind of cool. So cool. Oh, it's actually like a solar cell. Holy shit. It actually it, it's it's even working right now. Oh my god. I was I was looking around to see if I had to add a battery or something. It just works like that. Holy shit. Close it open it. And I guess this would be changing the resistance or something. I don't know. Weird. Also, I figured this out. This is pretty cool. That's so neat. So point it away from the light. goes down. Point it towards the light. It goes up. Put my hand in front of it. It goes down. Wow, it's so cool. Currently, when I'm filming, I'm using my phone and just using the light sensor on that. But I could definitely see myself using this. That's so cool. Wow. Damn. And the holster is really neat still. So I guess this could probably hook around a belt or something. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Oh, what? Whoa. Oh. Oh. So this has a little lip on the bottom, and I think that should fit just underneath there. Or something like that? I'm not sure. And use those to latch them on, and wow, <laughs> that's so cool! I like these living hinges that they have on here. How they're cut from the leather. I've never seen it like that before. That's so freaking cool. Looks like this is... Okay, waltz, waltz. I know actually... I've heard Coronet. Where have I heard Coronet from? I was looking at Coronet, and I couldn't exactly remember that being a brand of cameras. But it was a... I've heard that name before. Turns out, my first films that I ever found... Well, first 16mm films were made by Coronet. That's so cool. And that is by far not the coolest thing 
or it's not a cool thing, not the only cool thing of this entire video. So there's a third item that I found pretty freaking cool. It's tucked away inside here. It's a Vanger pocket knife. Almost, almost just like the Victorinox that I've been using. Well, I've been using this exact Victorinox I see. Yeah, it has a little mark on there. I've been using this one since I was about 12. And at first I didn't know what this was. Because it was like, really? Is that... Wait a minute, what? And it's it stunned me for a little bit. And then I was like, oh shit, that's a Vanger. I've never actually held one. I've never seen one. I've, I've only known the, Vic, uh, the Victorinox ones. The Victorinox, sorry. And so, yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I like the size. I like that it's a little bit smaller. It's really nice. And I do think that the logo is kind of... It has its own charm to it. It's kind of interesting. This is the Super Tinker that I enjoy. I, I never actually knew this was the Super Tinker until like a couple of years ago. So that's the different ones. It looks like Victoria Knox has gone with only three lines and sort shortened it down to Swiss. Then the uh, the Wenger, they decided to go with four lines and put the entire word of Switzerland on there. So that's kind of cool. Both stainless steel. Yeah. Although I will say there are some flaws to this Wenger that I already see. It's bent up or... Well, like there, it's fractured. It's just snapped off. I've bent the end of mine to heck and had to pound it back. But I don't see how somebody could snap the end of their one off. That's, that's, that's weird. I don't know. And I've really put this one through shit. Like, a lot of shit. I'm not sure how, like, how they compare to each other. I've, I'm not, like, that big of a pocket knife kind of person. Well, no, I... I have a pocket knife. It works for me. I love this. I have spares of this exact one, but I don't really like compare to other ones that much. And one thing that this is missing is I cannot do without this pair of scissors. This very pair of scissors has opened every single lithium cell I have ever used. Or at least it's freed it from the, the battery pack and wires and stuff like that. It's even melted the tip because one time I arced it over from a larger battery pack. And this one doesn't seem to have that. But hey, at least it doesn't have a fucking corkscrew. Because fucking corkscrews are just wastes of space and they're annoying. So yeah, I don't know. This is like 25 bucks for this one back when I got it. And if this was like $15 for the Wenger, then yeah, that'd be, that'd be pretty cool. But if it's the same price, I definitely still go with the same Victoria Knox Super Tinker. I almost entirely overlooked this letter in there. I'm sorry about that. I'm too excited about the stuff. Hello, Renoa. Thought you might find this light meter interesting after watching your video on the Bullock's camera. Your friend, Sean Counts. Well, thank you very much, Sean. This is very cool. And I think you underestimate how cool this is. I mean, yeah, this is kind of neat. Kind of nifty. Although I'm going to keep to the Victorinox. Let me know. What do you think I should do with the power supply? Or, I mean, the, the charger. Do you think I should do anything more than just straightening the metal and hooking it all back together? I know, of course, like, I'll probably wash a lot of the, the, the dirt and stuff off. But, yeah, do you think I should do anything more? Like, how far should I take this restoration? I think that I might want to just keep the stuff like it is. But I could strip all the paint off and redo it. But if I repainted it, the, it might look a lot different. I don't know. Although I could definitely see myself trying to repair this wooden piece because it's cracked and really dry. Would soaking it in linseed oil help it? I'm not really sure. So let me let, also let me know what you think would be the best way to maintain this nice wooden dial. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See ya!